Hi, I'm Kelly. Today I'm going to talk to our BB Law and LLB Program Director David Bishop and Deputy Program Director Bo Leffler. Let's go. Hi professors. Oh hey, hey Kelly, how's, how's it going? going? It's great. Um, school's starting and I'm really happy to be back. Me too. Great, yeah. Well, you want to come in and join us? Sure. Okay, so today we'll be talking about what makes BBA Law and LLB such a top-notch program. So to start off, would you guys mind sharing how, like the unique features of this program and how is it different from a single degree LLB program? Yeah, I think the main difference is that you just get the best of both, right? So students that study um, the BBA Law LLB program, they will go through almost all the same courses that they would if they were studying LLB but they would also be able to major in a business subject, uh, maybe even a, an extra professional degree in terms of accounting. And so when you leave, you add one extra year, but you have the ability to have two professional degrees. Right, so during the program, how can the business and legal studies complement each other? Well, uh, most law firms advise businesses, and most businesses require legal information on how to run their business effectively. So in getting both of those, you can choose either, and you will know both, both know more about the business world and about the legal world and how they can work together. So for prospective students, what should they be expecting to study when they come in? I think, um, again, the, the cool thing about it is that it's not that you study business and then you study law or that you're somehow distant from both those programs. You actually take the same courses roughly in the same order that you would if you're studying either the LLB or a business degree. So um, your first year, you'll take the same first year law courses that you would if you're studying LLB. And then you have the kind of typical common core and other things that you might have. Um, and then as you go through and progress, you can um, take the standard business courses as well. So say marketing, accounting, finance, econ, etc and then select your business side major as well. So again, that could be, once again, could be marketing, could be accounting, wealth management, which is I believe what you're taking. Uh, and then at the end of that, uh, whether you, if, if you choose just to do the BBA law degree after four years, then you'll have the great business degree that also has given you a broad perspective on the law. And then if you stay for the fifth year to get the LLB, then you'll have both. Yeah, so that's also one thing I really like about the program. Now, I, I've heard from a lot of students, I, I've been the program coordinator for the BBA Law for more than a decade, and I heard from a lot of students that I can't say it very well in Cantonese, but like, it's like ho chur or something like that. So basically, really, really challenging, right? Um, that can be true, but I'm curious from your perspective, like how has the BBA Law experience been for you? Right, so I do think it's slightly more, uh, like the workload is slightly heavier than a single degree program, like in general, but I'm really glad that the faculty, um, they had a really balanced spread of business and legal studies throughout the span of five years. So it's not like concentrated in business and concentrated in um, legal studies. And as um, Mr. Leffler has said, um, it really complements each other. So because of that, I can apply the skills and knowledge from both disciplines. And that actually helps me study like easier. So it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, they may not know that previously it was kind of like a jigsaw puzzle that didn't fit together, where they were just like fitting courses in. And then we spent a, a long time actually to reorder the, the course of study so that you were getting the same type of experience that others were that were studying the LLB and business degree. So I think it's, it's better because it flows now. So I mean, that's great, um, but it can still get stressful. And so from your perspective now as an experienced third year student, how do you manage your stress when, when you know, maybe times are challenging? I think usually the way I go about it is I sweat it out. So I can either go on a gym session, I go play badminton with my friends, or simply I just play some really uplifting music and then I just dance to it. I think this gives me like a short break away from all the problems that, that I'm running into because sometimes my mind is just so like cluttered, like everything is so cluttered together that I can't really think straight. And after like the exercise session, then I think I can finally sit myself down and then pick up like where I left off. Mm. And I think by taking breaks, it just prevents me from burning out. And I think that's crucial in university studies and in the future in career. Yeah, that's a really healthy perspective. It's great. So what is your favorite part about the program? I think it's the extensive range of opportunity that the school and faculty offers us. For example, um, a lot of opportunities and in exchanges, internship, as well as enrichment programs. For example, earlier this year, I participated in the Connectivity in Finance and the HAU Accenture Consultancy Program, mm -hmm. which are led by um, industry professionals, and then I gained a lot of insights from them, as well as practical trainings. So from that, I think I have 
like a lot of help in my future career as well as my future studies. Nice, absolutely. Um, and I don't think it's just about the the, you know, the academics and what you're doing in, in the school part of it, uh, but I also think that out of all the enrichment programs that are on top of that are, are fantastic as well. So um, what can you tell us that getting beyond the classroom, what about those enrichment programs? From what we learn in class, they're really just textbook knowledge as a basis for us like going forward into whatever field that we work in. But then these enrichment programs are like fairly different. Like the professionals do tell us like, oh, in real life you can't just do this because like in school, I don't think um, like in lectures they tell you that. <laughs> so that kind of gives me an edge over other people who didn't take these programs. So I think that's one thing that I really appreciate. Nice. Oh, and another thing, I think many prospective students also want to know about exchange opportunities. So because we are BBA Law and LLB students, with that restrict us in like what kind of exchanges we can go on to? Like, can we choose business or law exchanges? Yeah, actually, the, the one of the best things about the BBA and LLB program is that they can uh, they have the choice of three different um, exchange programs. They can do it with the law faculty, they can do it with uh, the business school, or they can go on exchanges offered by the university. So uh, really, there's so many places throughout the world that, it, that people can go on exchange. And I think it's cool to note too that it's not just, the only overseas opportunities aren't just through exchange. There can be other types of, um, you know, moot court opportunities or business case competitions that the university will often provide and maybe even finance. And so during summer times and, and sometimes even during the semester, you can actually go and engage in these other types of opportunities from both faculties, which is, which is great too. In different countries. Yeah. Oh, and one thing, I think prospective students really want to know about the career perspectives of BBA Law and LLB students. So what career paths can we possibly go into and how can the school support us for that? Yeah, it's a really good question and it's, it's obviously important to be looking forward, but one thing that's interesting about the world right now is nobody really knows what the jobs are going to be like five or ten years from now. And a lot of industries are rapidly being disrupted and changing. Um, that's great because it means there's a lot of really cool new opportunities that are out there. But it also means that the things that we're studying might be largely irrelevant by the time we're kind of at the peak of our career. And so if I was a student, if I was out there watching this right now, I would be looking for opportunities to expand my options. And so one good thing that the VBA Law Program does is that even if you never have any interest in going into law, understanding the way the law works and, and you know thinking like a lawyer can be extremely useful in terms of your communication and research and analytical thinking and problem solving. Even if you know you only want to be a lawyer and you never want to do business, going through that process can help you with you know budgeting or accounting or understanding the way like the psychology of marketing and communicating with people. So I think these are the things that I would be looking for. I wouldn't be looking for skills. And I definitely wouldn't be looking for a program that only offers skills. I would be looking for programs that really kind of stretches you and makes you a better person uh, so that regardless of what the future holds, you will be able to have a good, strong, solid career even as things and markets change. Yeah, and I agree that this program does prepare me to go into like the future uncertainties and I'm just really glad that I'm here right now. Oh, and one thing I was wondering for like students like me who take both business and law, would we have an edge over someone taking only a single degree in any field in specific or yeah. in general? Yeah, no, definitely. So when I was in private practice, uh, I worked for a law firm and most of our clients were investment banks. Uh, and there was a noticeable difference between those, pe those professionals who had a working knowledge of both law and business. Uh, they were much more um, helpful to the transaction uh, and actually they progressed a lot quicker in their fields uh, because they just they understood more about the deal. Yeah, I think unlike um, some professors here at Hong Kong U, Bo and I both have experience as lawyers uh, working here in Hong Kong and in the U.S. And um, I think, like Bo said, sometimes you just need to be able to speak the language. Sometimes you just need to understand the lingo and understand what the other side is going through. So again, whether you're a lawyer working with a bank, whether you're a lawyer inside of a bank, whether you're um, in a bank and you have to deal with lawyers, everyone has to be able to communicate effectively and efficiently. And so again, even if you never want to have that as your career, it's very, very valuable experience and definitely can make you more valuable to a future organization. For future applicants, what qualities do you look in them? So like, yep. what do you expect from them? I think Bo is a more expert on the uh, admissions part. Maybe he can take that one. Sure. Yeah, uh, we're looking for bright students who are motivated, show initiative, are creative. Uh, you have to work hard, um, but we want you to think kind of outside the box as well. Those students are the ones that thrive in our program. 
And I think it's important to note a lot of students when they when they ask us about admissions, they say, well, I studied science or I studied uh, something else that wasn't law or business related. Does that put me at a disadvantage? And I think both of us agree, absolutely it doesn't. In fact, it might even give you a slight advantage from the standpoint that you will view the world from a broader or at least different perspective. So that can be a very, very good thing as well. Okay, so now that we've kind of talked through um, what we're looking for from the students, as someone who's gone through this process, are there things or tips or advice that you can give for prospective students that maybe want to apply for or join the program? So for starters, I think students shouldn't expect that the program is going to be easy, it's not going to be a piece of cake, but I think rest assured because HKU and the faculty also like offers a lot of career and advisory programs or even like one-on-one -on -one sessions. So I think whenever students do feel lost, when they get admitted and like they just have trouble adapting, like they will always have help from the school. So that's one thing that I think they can keep in mind. And I think if you do put a lot of effort in time management as well as proper course planning, I think you will still have a lot of time to explore into different areas and you will have good opportunities to explore university life and I think it won't simply be focused on studying and your life will still be vibrant. Yeah, I think that's a really good perspective um, and we, we really appreciate you being here with us today and, and sharing your ideas not just with us but all the prospective students out there. All right, thanks for having us. It's, been, it's, been it's really nice talking to you too. Yeah, thank you.